Hi, I'm Bob. Let's finish the problems for Chapter Nine about the specification and data issues. For problem eight, we can substitute for x two and write the outcome variable y as a function of x one with a composite intercept and a composite error term. Since the expected value of the composite error term conditional on x one is zero, we can show the result. In the regression of y on x one, the probability limit of the OLS slope estimator alpha one hat equals alpha one plus the ratio of the covariance between x one and nu and the variance of x one. We can show that the covariance is zero, so the probability limit of alpha one hat equals alpha one. That is beta one plus beta two times delta one. It is not equal to beta one unless beta two is zero or delta one is zero. For part two, the expected value of y conditional on x one is a linear function of x one. The square term of x one is not in the equation. Thus. The probability limit of the OLS estimate for the coefficient on x one squared should be zero. For part three, we have derived the expression of y in part one. We can show that the expected value of the composite error conditional on x one is zero. The variance of the composite error term conditional on x one is sigma squared plus. Beta two squared times tau squared, because the estimated coefficient on x one squared should be close to zero. The t statistic will be tiny, and we could not reject the null hypothesis of zero coefficient on x one squared. For the last part, we cannot detect the omission of x two by adding a nonlinear function of x one to the model. It is very likely not to reject the null hypothesis, but it does not imply that there is no omitted variable bias problem. Let's do problem nine. The sign of the partial effect is the same as the sign of the second term, which is not necessarily the same as beta j. For part two, suppose h is a linear function of x. The partial average effect of x j on y has the same sign as the second term. Whereas the partial median effect of x j on y has the same sign as beta j. In the case that beta j is negative, and delta j over two is greater than beta j, x j can have a negative effect on the median, but a positive effect on the mean. For part three, if x equals sigma squared. We can write the predicted y based on the mean and that based on the median. Y hat is always larger than y tilde. In other words, the prediction based on the mean is always larger. Than that based on the median. Let's find answers to problem ten. The population model is as follows. In part one, we use the missing indicator method (MIM). The stronger assumption means 
the unobserved factors in the error term are not correlated with the explanatory variable x and the dummy indicator variable m. The assumption will fail if the data are not missing completely at random, or the reason that data are missing depends on the unobserved factors in the error term. In part 2, we add and subtract beta 1 times m times x in the population equation. In part 3, let xi, yi, and mi be random draws from the population. The variable zi equals 0 if mi is 1 for missing data. z equals xi for observed data. In part 4, we first show the expression of the covariance. Then we show that the ORS estimate of beta 1 from the regression of y on z is biased or inconsistent because the covariance between z and the composite error is not zero. In other words, if the missing data indicator is omitted from the model, the ORS estimate is inconsistent. For PAX5, MX and M are correlated as described in the equation, so M is a sensible proxy variable for MX. For PAX6, my answer is no. The missing data indicator variable M is related to the family income X. Extremely high income families might not report their income, leading to a correlation between family income and the probability of reporting. It is not realistic to assume that M and X are independent. Let's solve the last problem. In column 3, we add the interaction term between education and IQ to the model. The partial effect of education on the log wage is a function of IQ. The coefficient on education is at the point when IQ equals 0, which is impossible and not in the sample. Similarly, the partial effect of IQ on the log wage is a function of education. The coefficient on IQ is at the point when education is zero, which is not in the sample either. That is why the estimates are weird and inconsistent. That is why the estimates are weird and insignificant. For part two, the sample mean of education is 13.5 and the sample mean of IQ is 101. We can add an interaction term, education minus 13.5 times IQ minus 101 to the model. The coefficient on education is at the sample mean of IQ. 
and the coefficient on IQ is at the sample mean of education. The estimates are reasonable now and statistically significant at the 1% level. Thank you very much for solving the problems with me. I hope the solutions help. See you soon in the computer exercises. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.